Hello, everyone, and welcome to Food Service Facts State of the Nation. It's an honor and a pleasure to be here to talk to you about the latest trends in Canada's food service industry. Over the last 18 months, we've seen the devastating impact of the pandemic across the entire food service industry. It's disrupted the lives of the millions of Canadians that would walk through our restaurant doors every single day. It's created havoc amongst the 1.2 million Canadians that depend on the food service industry for employment. And it's also led to the permanent closure of more than 12,000 food service establishments across the country. Overall, this has had a ripple effect across the entire food service industry, impacting manufacturers, suppliers, distributors, as well as farmers. But at the same time, we're seeing an incredible amount of innovation as restaurants look for new and sometimes unconventional ways to try and survive all this. So in today's presentation, I really want to tackle three big questions that's really on the minds of everyone in the food service industry. The first is, where are we in terms of the recovery? Because different provinces and different segments of the food service industry are at various stages of the recovery. And in this section, I'll talk about the recovery that we're seeing in supper and how that compares to other food service segments. And we'll talk about all the different on and off premise trends that are also impacting the food service industry. From there, we'll then focus on when we expect to see the restaurant industry recover. And in particular, we'll talk about our latest food service sales forecast and some of the challenges that are coming up because of this recovery. And then finally, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about what does the industry look like after the recovery? So once all this is over with, how is the industry gonna change and evolve to adapt to this whole new world? So I'm gonna dive right into today's presentation and really focus on where we are in the recovery. And sometime in the last 18 months, you may have come across this chart that shows the decline in commercial food service sales. Overall, I've said in presentations in the past that basically the industry fell off a cliff and broke both legs. Um, and really, this is not just a survival situation, but now this has become a rescue operation. And so we have been dependent on government for some help and assistance throughout this crisis. If we go back to just before COVID, in February 2020, we had food service sales at a near record high of $6.3 billion. And that had fallen to just $2.5 billion in a matter of just two months. This represents the lowest food service sales in more than two decades. And at the same time, we saw the loss of more than 800,000 jobs across the country in food service. So it's just an incredible impact in a very short, narrow period of time. But we've also seen a very uneven recovery. Overall, food service sales did partially recover in the summer of 2020, but then we can see the impact of the second wave and then the third wave. And overall, food service sales stand at $5.4 billion as of June, which is the most recent data that we have available from Statistics Canada. So overall, we are only about 85% of a recovery compared to where we were prior to COVID. At the same time, if we wanna compare ourselves to the retail sector, Retail sales overall had returned back to pre-COVID levels in September of 2020, and in fact are now 8% above pre-COVID levels. So an incredible disparity between what's going on in the retail sector and what's happening in the food service industry. So overall, food service sales have varied dramatically by provinces. In general, in 2020, provinces that were the hardest hit in terms of COVID were also the ones that saw the largest decline in food service sales. So overall, between June 2021 and February 2020, food service sales are down 15% uh, over that time frame. When we look at it by provinces, Ontario has been the hardest hit. And keep in mind that Ontario had not reopened until July. And so overall sales were down 22.6% compared to pre-COVID levels. In Manitoba, we started to see a rise in the number of cases, and so sales are down now 18.4%. In Saskatchewan, that is not a typo. In fact, four point, Saskatchewan has seen 4.1% growth above pre-COVID levels, so it's the first province to see a return in food service sales to pre-pandemic levels. And over in Atlantic Canada, we see Newfoundland and Labrador down just by 1%, New Brunswick down by 4.6%, and although Prince Edward Island is down by 11.1% as of June, we heard that that was a really good summer. And in fact, August sales were some of the strongest numbers that they've seen in years. 
But growth depends on the type of segment as well. And certainly full service restaurants and drinking places were the hardest hit segment because of this crisis. Overall, drinking place sales fell by nearly 90% in the months after the pandemic began. Full service restaurants had also struggled because many of these operators did not have any type of takeout service uh, and so had to convert over to off-premise dining. With the declining cases, as well as an increase in the number of patios, we did see a recovery in the summer months, but then the second wave and the third wave had a dramatic impact on food service sales. Overall, as of June, full service restaurant sales are about 23% below pre-COVID levels, while drinking places are down by 35%. With the reopening of the economy in Ontario, plus a good patio season, we do expect to see these numbers climb higher in August as well as in July. Uh, But of course, as we see the closure of patios, we expect to see that dip down just a little bit. But quick service restaurants in contrast were not hit as hard because these are the operators that could rely more on takeout service. Overall, the largest decline that we saw for quick service restaurants was 40% back in April 2020. But right now, they're only about 3% below pre-COVID levels. So quite a difference between what we're seeing with quick service restaurants and what we're seeing with full service restaurants and drinking places. The reason why we're seeing these big differences is just because of the comfort level of Canadians. So when we did a Canadian survey uh, across the country back in September, We found that most Canadians, 94% were comfortable with going to get takeout from a restaurant and 88% were comfortable with getting drive-through. In contrast, in sort of that next tier of comfort was patios, where 76% of Canadians felt very comfortable eating on a patio outdoors at a traditional restaurant and 66% were comfortable eating on a patio at a quick service restaurant. Unfortunately, when we get into that next tier is when we start to see a bit of a drop off in that comfort level, as only 65% of Canadians would feel comfortable eating indoors at a traditional restaurant, and only 49% would eat indoors at a quick service restaurant. And finally, last last tier of in terms of comfort, only 44% said that we feel comfortable eating in a food court in a mall, and only 25% would go out to a bar. Now we had conducted the study again in April and we didn't see any change or variation in these numbers. So even with the decline in the number of cases, people are still feeling most comfortable with drive-through and takeout, more so with the patios and indoor dining and then less so eating at a food court or at a bar. And all of this had a dramatic impact on on and off-premise dining. If we look at before COVID, quick service restaurants account 32% of dine-in was from uh, quick service restaurants. Meanwhile, that had dropped down to just 9% in terms of market share for dine-in at quick service restaurants. For full service restaurants, the market share had dropped from 80% of sales down to 45% of sales. And this number would be even smaller if it had not been for patios. In terms of off-premise, takeout was the most popular, accounting for 41% of all sales at a quick service restaurant and 36% of all sales at a full service restaurant. This was followed by drive through which accounted for 38% of all dollars spent at a quick service restaurant. But it's important to note that this accounted for nearly 50% of all traffic at a restaurant, at quick service restaurants. So an incredible amount of market share just from drive through occasions. And then finally, the big topic that's really on the minds of everybody is delivery, where delivery sales jumped from 7% for quick service restaurants up to 12%, and then jumped up to 16% of quick uh, full service restaurant sales. And this is largely because consumers were looking for convenience, they didn't feel like going out. And in the case of full service restaurants, because on-premise dining was closed, they opted to go with delivery. But overall, Canadians are here to stay in terms of going to delivery. One of the things that we asked is how, you know, what are the big factors that you consider when ordering delivery? And 73% said that they rank food quality as consistently good as most important. And we see a lot of restaurants re-engineering their menus to find foods that would travel well. They were looking for packaging that would make it so that the food would travel well. So this is one of the big changes that's come out of the food service industry because of the pandemic. When we talked with older Canadians, 65% of those that are 55 and older want familiarity. They want to order from a restaurant where they visited before in the past. They didn't want to try and take a chance on a restaurant that they weren't familiar with. 
When it comes to younger Canadians, 56% of 18 to 34 year olds were the most value conscious. They were choosing delivery from restaurants that offered value for money. And in fact, nine out of 10, 18 to 34 year olds had ordered delivery within the past six months. So this is a very important clientele for food service operators. And finally, because of the stress that's been happening, we saw that nearly six out of 10 Canadians were looking for items that they craved. And a lot of this was the comfort foods such as chicken sandwiches, hamburgers, as well as pizza. As I said in the beginning, the food service industry has really taken a huge hit, and it's particularly when it comes to the morning meals and the lunches. And all of this has to do with the fact that the pandemic really disrupted the lives of every Canadian. Canadians were no longer commuting to work or going to work like they used to. And with schools closed in a lot of cases, this really changed how people were dining out at restaurants. If we look at the immediate impact right after the pandemic has started in Q2 of 2020, we saw traffic decline by 75% for morning meals and lunches at full service restaurants. And that has only improved to just 56% 50, uh, decline for morning meals and a 42% decline for Q1 2021. By contrast, quick service restaurants were not hit as hard, but we are starting to see a much faster recovery in those day parts. So morning meals, which were originally down by 36%, are now down by just 5%. And lunches, which were originally down by 36% as well, are now down by 10%. But where we're seeing the most improvement is on the supper side of things. So for full service restaurants, supper is down just by 20%, and PM snacks are down by 27% in the first quarter of 2021. But when we look at quick service restaurants, supper and PM snacks is basically back to pre-COVID levels. So we've seen a dramatic improvement in terms of sales for those occasions at quick service restaurants. And that's driving that recovery that we're seeing at quick service restaurants. So a lot of changes are happening in the food service industry. And the question then becomes, when will we see the industry recover? Again, going back to our survey of Canadians, nearly 9 out of 10 Canadians say that they enjoy eating out at a restaurant. The same 9 out of 10 are also looking forward to going out to a restaurant with their friends and family again. It's one of the things that they miss the most is just having that time to socialize. And for 64% of Canadians, they say that once the pandemic is over, restaurants will be an important part of their daily life. And this just goes to show that pent up demand that exists out there for food service operators. So as part of our forecasting, we look at things like GDP, disposable income, the unemployment rate and tourism to try and forecast food service sales. So starting with quick service restaurants, just before the pandemic, we were looking at quarterly food service sales of about $8.5 billion. And that had dropped to $6 billion in the second quarter, but we did see a partial recovery in the third, fourth and first quarter of 2021. In Q2, we continue to see an improvement, and we expect to see that, if not in Q3, certainly in Q4, that the quick service restaurant industry will return back to pre-COVID levels, and then we'll start to see steady gains after that. So this is in much different contrast than what we're seeing at full service restaurants. So prior to the pandemic, full service restaurants in the fourth quarter had quarterly sales of $8.7 billion. And that dropped to just $3.2 billion in the second quarter. As we saw that recovery in the second, third quarter and the opening of patios, and we saw sales of $6.2 billion. But then with the third and the second and the third wave, we saw that pullback in terms of food service sales. Because of the pent up demand, the reopening of patios, the reopening of Ontario's food service industry, we expect to see that food service sales of $7.3 billion in the third quarter, and that as long as there isn't another case of closures across the country, that sales will continue to climb and return back to pre-COVID levels by about the second quarter of 2022. So overall, we did see a 28% decline in food service sales in 2020, only a partial recovery. And this is largely because of the second and third waves in the first half of the year really pulling down food service sales. It's finally until 2022 that we start to see that return back to pre-pandemic levels in terms of food service sales. But very important to note that even though we're seeing that recovery in sales, we're not seeing that recovery in traffic. Most of this is due to a higher average check size or higher menu prices. 
And so it won't be until about 2023 or perhaps even 2024 that we see traffic return back to pre-pandemic levels. Even though we're starting to see that recovery, there's still more challenges on the way. Initially, and certainly in the short term, one of the biggest problems that we're having is a short-term disruption in supply. And this is leading to higher prices for fresh vegetables, cooking oil and beef. We're also seeing higher prices for poultry and dairy. And as we talk to restaurant operators, it's not only food prices that they're seeing the increase in, but also higher labor costs and packaging costs are soaring as well. So in order to cope with this, we had asked restaurants, how are you dealing with all this and how are you responding to higher food costs? And it really seems to be that there's gonna be a mix of partially absorbing those costs as well as raising menu prices uh, because they could answer more than one question here. For 35% of operators, they said that they would remove the items from the menu. 33% are looking at other sources uh, for lower cost ingredients. It's interesting to note that 31% are reducing other expenses to offset either the higher food costs, and only 18% are looking to switch to lower priced ingredients. In terms of strategies, I've talked with some restaurant operators, and I remember one operator telling me that when it comes to all these higher food costs and all these struggles, the one thing that you really want to do is you can cut back on all your other expenses, but don't cut back on the key elements of your price, your foods. So she gave the example is you can cut back on single ply toilet paper if you need to, but don't cut back on the butter that makes your signature dish. People are going to continue to look for quality and value uh, as we talked about earlier. And so this is one of those key strategies that we need to focus on as an operation. So in terms of menu prices, the directionally, what we're seeing is higher menu prices going forward. Traditionally, we would see menu inflation of about two and a half to maybe 3%. But according to our latest survey, nearly half of food service operators said that they're going to raise menu prices by 4% or more over the coming 12 months. And we're already seeing the impact of this in the food service industry. The latest data from Stats Canada to August shows that food service sales menu inflation is up 3.7% at quick service restaurants and up 3.3% at full service restaurants. But we do hear of many cases, especially for full service restaurants, where they're increasing their menu prices by 10% or more. So this is going to be one of those big issues in the short term. Another issue, certainly in the short term, and as well as more in the long term, is labor shortages. And we're seeing this really across the country right now. Even in the second and the third wave of COVID, we saw labor shortages and vacancy rates of 70,000 or more in the food service and accommodation industry. And this puts us right back to where we were prior to COVID, so that same level. And then with the reopening of the economy, especially in the June, what we saw is a spike in food service job vacancies of 129,000. So this is a record high. And in talking with restaurant operators, eight out of 10 have said that they're having a difficult time trying to hire back of house positions, such as dishwashers, cooks, and chefs. Front of house positions are also been very hard to find, especially for counter attendants and that's cashiers. So a lot of restaurants are looking for new and different ways to try and bring the employees in. They're offering employee bonuses. They're looking at raising wages if they can afford to, or they're looking at offering benefit programs for the first time. But this is all part of a very long-term problem that's gonna affect the food service industry. Because one of the things that we're not hearing about as much is the demographic challenges that are hitting the industry. So if we look back in terms of the late 70s, early 80s, the youth of 15 to 24 year olds used to account for about 20% of the population. That number has dropped down to just 12% today. And not only are there fewer youth today than what there were a decade ago, what we're also seeing is that there's fewer youth participating in the workforce in the first place. Many young Canadians are putting off going into the job market in order to focus on their schooling, to do some other jobs in terms of occupations, uh, as well as volunteer. So all of that is having a direct impact on the labor market. And so this is a problem that is not going to go away anytime soon. So what does the industry look like after the recovery? So again, we've talked with restaurant operators and they said that 97% have made some change to their business in order to survive. 70% have changed their hours of operation, 
Some have streamlined their menu to reduce the number of items on the menu. A lot have increased their use of media, social media, uh, in order to reach out to new customers. 37% have added new technology, and we're seeing this as you go into restaurants and having to go to a QR code to order and see from the menu. One of the more innovative things that have come out of the food service industry because of the pandemic is 18% began selling meal kits for the very first time and 13% so selling groceries. And as part of our surveys, we're finding that a lot of Canadians and a lot of food service operators are interested in continuing to sell these meal kits and continuing to sell groceries in the future. So a lot of these changes that they're making will continue on even after the pandemic subsides. And overall, 76% of Canadian food service operators agree that the food service industry has been changed forever. Not only are they going to implement some of those changes, but they're trying to adapt to this new world that we live in. What we're seeing is new concepts coming out from Burger King, for instance, where they're going to multiple drive throughs uh, where they're going to have two drive through lanes plus a third drive through lane dedicated just for the uh, third party delivery people. We're also seeing that shrinking of the on-premise dining. We're seeing more increased use of patios or a walk-up window. So one of the things that we're seeing in the food service industry is only a single drive-through. And what's happening is that's creating a lot of bottlenecks. And so what happens is you get into that drive-through lane and because it's a complicated order, it really backs up the rest of the, the drive-through. So this multiple drive-through lane is a way to alleviate some of those problems. We're also seeing, especially here in Toronto, where they're taking out windows or taking out parts of the wall so that they can install a takeout window so that you no longer have to go inside. And one of the biggest innovations that really is going to come out of this is the growth in ghost kitchens. So we're going to shrink down the on-premise to absolutely nothing and really focus on the outside delivery uh, as well as takeout. So this is, again, one of those big innovations that's going to take place in the food service industry. Because we're talking about the food service industry, I do want to talk a little bit about food as well in terms of what some of the most popular items are on Canadian menus. And certainly 87% of Canadians said that they're interested in ordering food sourced from local farmers um, or something that's Canadian produced. They want to support their local restaurant and they also want to support their local farmer. And so we see a lot of growth in here. Um, and even on the chefs and talking with the chefs, what we're hearing is they're very much interested in the local trend. And so this is amongst the top trends in the food service industry. As we talked about before, about that craveability, 78% of Canadians are interested in comfort foods or comfort foods with a twist. So something that's very familiar, such as grilled cheese, but taking up a couple of notches to make it much more interesting. Then we get into foods that are all about health and wellness, something that's natural and unprocessed, or foods that are raised without antibiotics. We see a little bit lower on the list is meatless vegetarian entrees and plant-based burgers. As part of our chef survey last year, we saw a huge growth in this, and it was the top food service trend. Now, while it's only down to 38% for overall Canadians, when we look at just the young category of 18 to 34 year olds, Nearly half of 18 to 34 year olds are interested in meatless vegetarian entrees as well as plant-based burgers and sausages. So this trend is not going away anytime soon. Another innovation that may come out of this pandemic is meal subscriptions, where customers sign up to get meals during the month for a pickup or delivery at a discounted price. While it's only 28% popular amongst 28% of overall Canadians, it's very popular amongst the young population. Uh, about 40% of young people between the ages of 18 to 34. So overall, we do see that quick service restaurant sales are forecast to return back to pre-COVID levels, if not in the third quarter of 2021, certainly in the fourth quarter of 2021. With full service restaurants, that recovery is going to be a little bit further along, and it's not going to be until about the second quarter of 2022. And finally, the food service industry has been changed forever because of this and specifically impacting delivery as well as ghost kitchens. Certainly, there's been a lot of challenges going on in the food service industry, but I'm also excited. Uh, I'm optimistic that the industry will come out better because of this, and we're seeing all those changes taking place in the industry. So definitely a lot of challenges in the short term, but certainly in the long term, we do expect to see the recovery continue on. And again, it's going to be a lot of innovation a lot of changes, and I think that's going to make the industry a lot stronger in the long term. 
So thank you so very much. And it's been a pleasure speaking with you today.